This 60 inch TV was being thrown away because it's broken and I wanna see if I can fix it for less than a dollar and save it from the landfill. So the deal with this TV is that someone I know was getting rid of it and I asked if I could have it. And I did the first thing you should always do if you're gonna take home a TV or a monitor is to make sure the LCD screen doesn't have any cracks in it, any lines or discolorations, because if the LCD is cracked, you probably don't wanna take it home because that's something you can't fix. All right, let's plug it in, see if we can turn it on and make some observations. So it's plugged in. I see the standby light come on. Let's push the button, power button. Press the power button, see what happens. Oh, did you see that? It was a flash on the screen. Here's a look at it again in slow motion. When you see a flash like that on the TV screen after you turn it on, that usually means there's a backlight problem. And because I suspect it's an LED backlight issue, you wanna verify it, either grab a flashlight or use the one on your phone and get in really close and see if you can see anything on the screen. So we have our flashlight on, let's take a look. If we get in close, you can see words right on the screen. Look at that, no signal. So that means that the TV's working, but the LED backlight is not working. The backlight is a crucial component to making an LCD TV work. If you wanna learn more about that, I made a whole video on how the display works. So you can check that out after my attempt to fix this guy. All right, we got the TV unplugged. Let's flip it around to get the back cover off so we can get inside. I'm glad these TVs don't weigh very much. So my goal here is to get behind the LCD screen, but in order to do that, I need to take all the plastic off of the TV, starting with the back cover. And getting the back cover off is pretty easy. There's just lots of little screws. To get the plastic back cover off, sometimes you need a pry tool, and it sounds like you're breaking something, but it's normal. If you're ever in doubt, take a step back and make sure you didn't miss a screw. Next, we have to move the front plastic bezel. There's some plastic clips and some screws underneath. And usually at this point, I also disconnect the TV speakers. So when we flip the TV back up, these aren't falling off. And I also disconnect the remote control sensor since it's connected to the bezel. With the bezel off and the TV flipped over, I set the TV mounting brackets on some wood so that none of the electronics are gonna touch the table. Next is the most crucial and important step to take and where I see many people trying to do this fail, it's removing the LCD screen off the chassis. It's very fragile. So two things that I recommend, you wanna make sure that all of the driver boards connected to the screen are loose and disconnected. Otherwise, if you try to lift this up, it may rip some of those tab bonds and then you can't fix it. And then secondly, get a large piece of cardboard if you can and wipe down both sides to try to cut down on any dust because you don't wanna get dust behind the LCD screen if possible. I was about ready to lift the LCD and I noticed there's a couple brackets that I forgot to take off. That would definitely have cracked the screen if I tried to force that. So I double checked, all the brackets are off and the LCD is free. So what we're gonna do is lift up carefully this little corner here so you can see I can lift it up. I don't wanna lift it up more than that and it might crack. So I wanna to start to work the cardboard in underneath here. And now with the LCD on the cardboard, I can just lift up the cardboard put it in a safe spot while I'm still working on the TV. So next I gotta take off these white clips and there's a few screws I have to take off, but there's a bunch of films underneath here. If you wanna know what they are, again, you can watch my video, but it's very important that you keep them in the same order and you don't get any dirt on them and try not to get any dust on them and definitely don't crease them. And the reason for that is because the light coming through here could get blocked or bent in some way and you may be able to notice it in the image. And also if you haven't grabbed my PDF on how to diagnose a broken TV, make sure you look below on how to get that. It's like a geological dig here, the layers you have to go through. And with that layer removed, we can finally see the LEDs themselves. There's one more layer of paper here that we have to pull off. Now, if you tear the paper here, it's not a big deal. So these glue strips did win a few battles, some paper left behind, it's not a big deal because now we're at the part where we can actually find the problem. Now I wanna to try to fix this for under dollar, so I need to find out which LEDs are actually bad so I can fix them. I put the bezel back on so I can use the remote control and I've got a phone up there recording in slow motion. So let's see what happens. All right, you saw the flash, let's check it out in slow motion. So when the lights are at their peak before they shut off, we can pause it and we can see which LEDs are not lighting up. And in my case, there's one on every strip and perhaps multiple bad ones on that bottom right strip. So in order to find out which LEDs are bad on this bottom strip here, I have an LED tester. This is kind of a very inexpensive tool. So here it will put power to the LEDs. And you can see the first one, and number seven are bad. So by my count, that's 13 bad LEDs. So let's get to work. So I went to AliExpress and bought 20 LEDs. They come individually packaged in these little strips. And these lights are pretty tiny. Here it is on a quarter for a sense of scale. To get to the bad LEDs, we have to pop off this diffuser. You can just use a pry tool and just pop it off. And then underneath the diffuser is the LED. So here's a closer look at this bad LED under the microscope. Here's the positive side and then the negative side. 
and you can see some of the wires inside and that little rectangle thing in the middle is the light emitting diode and you can see a crack. I believe this crack is on the color filter, the yellowish looking middle part that helps it produce more white light. But we can't see inside the diode and it doesn't light up even when a small voltage is applied to it and a good LED would light up. So this one needs to be replaced. With my hot air station set to about 400 degrees Celsius, I keep it on there for about five or six seconds and then I can remove the bad LED. I'll add some flux to help with the soldering process Get the orientation correct, which is pretty easy. Just match the large pad on the LED with the large pad on the board. And then with another five or six seconds of heat, the solder melts and I can place the LED, then remove the heat and it solidifies in place. Then to check, I apply power to the LED strip to test it and you can see it lights up. So I just replaced 13 of these LEDs. I did buy 20 of them for $2. So that's about 10 cents each. So at 13, that means I spent about $1.30 in parts, a little bit over what I wanted, but close enough. Now the moment of truth, I have all of them hooked up. I still have to do a few repairs though. I have to glue these diffusers back on. There's just three points, a little bit of super glue on each of those, and they'll be back in business and put everything back together. But I wanna see if the backlight works because I know everything else works. So let's try this out. Here's the remote. Hey, 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 look, it worked. They're all staying on and they should dim a little bit in a second. And that's what it's supposed to do. Now, when you're repairing something, don't celebrate too early because you still have to put everything back together and then double check to make sure it still works. Now, my goal with this project was to challenge myself to repair it as inexpensively as possible. Ideally, if you opened up a TV like this, you would replace all of the LEDs, or if you didn't have the tools or bother with soldering, you'd want to buy replacement LED strips. I looked on eBay and for all the backlight strips for this TV, it was about $50. So why did these 13 LEDs fail? It's either bad parts, bad design, or maybe both. See, a lot of people run their backlight at the highest brightness, and that means the highest temperature. And these backlights should be designed to be able to handle every scenario, but they can fail because of the high heat and the thermal cycling. So I got the TV back together again. Here's the real moment of truth. It looks like it works. I didn't break it, putting it back together again. So if you wanna see another repair or perhaps learn something new, check out this video over here and thank you for watching.